has been your most embarrassing moment? Because the one I always remember is when we were playing, we were playing in Sheffield on the day oh, of I the don't. Sheffield United Sheffield Wednesday derby. There were there were riot police on the streets. Uh, we were playing in Sheffield. He'd been had a bit of a heavy night the night before when we played in Cardiff, and so we go out on stage and there's all these like you know, really and the, the crowd is in Sheffield is always quite boisterous. And they're all shouting, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Yorkshire. And he goes, how you doing, Cardiff? Because he only woke up about half an hour before the gig. How you doing, Cardiff? <laughs> and like, this sea of like, beer, beer and, balls. and bottles came flying over. And I'm in the middle. It, him and our guitarist Ross just kind of step behind the PA stack. And I'm like that. And the lights are on you. So you just see him coming at the last minute. Like, you know when you see those like, uh, Lord of the Rings or uh, Gladiator, and the arrows come down like a big black sea of death. And yeah, thanks for that. Good. Moments. One song you wish you had written. Happy birthday. Isn't that still generating loads of cash right now? I mean, I think it's been really nice. Who's getting the cash for that? The woman who wrote it. She wrote oh, it, yeah. and, you know, and, and I think every time you get the old ding, 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 in the card or whatever, yeah. she gets a little bunce. Not bad, is it? Good. Uh, maybe that's not the most artistic answer. <laughs> Best gig you've ever been to? Tony Bennett at the Royal Albert Hall. And he was amazing. Just him, four guys, like pianist, guitarist, drummer, bass. And for the last number, he, he's in Albert Hall, right? He they turn off all the amps. It's just him and his voice. And he sings Fly Me to the Moon with the guitarist, just playing a bit of guitar, not mic'd up. And it sent, you know, the old shivers down the spine, it was, it was phenomenal. It was uh, one of the first of Beatles Rock shows, 2005, and it was when, before they had a venue there, it was actually in the Manumission Club. So you got all these kind of people from all over Europe and the world there clubbing. You, you know, you're supposed to go on at half 10, but you end up going <coughs> on at half five in the morning. And there's all these kind of crazy, beautiful, half-naked girls dancing around the stage, and, good. and it was just the sun's coming up, and it was just kind of like, this is off. This is, this is off the hook. It's fantastic, you know. Um, it's too many to mention, really, because sometimes where you go and think about the really little small ones where it just went crazy, and um, it's good, good, good times. Do, do, do. Elvis or Pele, the king of rock and roll versus the king of football. As a musician, I'd always go Elvis, but you know you can never get tired of watching Pele, can you? I mean, Pele set the standard, didn't he? Yeah, he was the first uh, real god of football. Yeah. And he's still, you know, Maradona's compared against Pele, Messi's compared against Pele. It'd be Elvis, wouldn't it? Yeah, because he could sing you songs, wouldn't he? He could, uh, could have a jam, eating contest. Because there's no guarantee if you're on a desert island with Pele that you'll have a football. Favourite sports theme tune? Always had a soft spot for grandstand. Yeah. Back in the day. Boom. <laughs> Might have to use one of those. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Next record. Yeah. What we're going to do today is we're going to speak to some very gullible Chelsea fans and we're going to talk about players that potentially could be coming into the club, but those players don't exist. We're going to have fun with Chelsea fans down at the bridge. Well, here we are outside Stamford Bridge with three hardcore Chelsea fans. We've got number one Chelsea fan, two massive uh, blue fans. Here we've got Stephen here, big, big Chelsea fan. 